Thank you for the introduction. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the FDA Drug Substance Workshop. I'm Lawrence Yu, Director, Office of New Drug Products, FDA. A quality product of any kind consistently meets the expectation of a user. Drug is no different. Patients expect safe and effective medicine with every dose they take. Pharmaceutical quality is assuring every dose is safe and effective, free of contamination and defects. It is what gives the patients confidence in their next dose of medicine. However, over the years, we have experienced significant quality issues. The first issue is a 2000 cyclosporine withdrawal. That's all cyclosporine is a narrow therapeutic window index drug. This slide shows that two products perform differently in water, apple juice, and orange juice. However, they are very similar in milk. Drug labeling state that to make a narrow solution modified more palatable, and it should be diluted with orange, juice, orange or apple juice. The combination of a narrow solution with milk can be unpalatable. In reality, milk not only makes that unpalatable, but also reduces the bioavailability as the protein in the milk destroys the structure of a microemulsion, make it a behavior like emotion, and eventually reduce the bioavailability. The second issue is the withdrawal of a genetic bioproblem product for non bioequivalence. Although the innovator and generic bioproblem products were by equivalent at a low strength, 150 mg, but they are different at the high strength, 300 mg. I wish we had an in vitro dissolution method that can predict that non bioequivalence in vivo. The high strength was eventually withdrawn from the market once the FDA confirmed it was not equivalent to the innovative product. The third major quality issue is the heparin cont contamination outbreak in 2007 to 2008. Heparin is an old product, has been used since its approval in 1939. However, all of a sudden, in 2007, the FDA received numerous adverse reaction reports. With assistance from academia, the FDA discovered that the cause of adverse reaction was the use of a heparin containing and contaminate identified as a over softened chondroitin sulfate. The last quality issue is ongoing product recalls due to nitro, nitroso dimethylamine. The high levels of NDMA has caused the recall of Versatin, Metformin, Zantac. These product issues signify the importance of regulatory oversight. We truly believe that the patients deserve quality medications. The future of pharmaceutical quality is Six Sigma. The, the path to get a Six Sigma quality includes economic drivers, performance-based regulation, emerging technology, pharmaceutical quality design, continuous improvement and operation excellence, as well as efficient, agile, and flexible regulatory oversight. In this remarks, I would like to describe FDA's pharmaceutical quality journey from process and technology, quality by design, to integrated quality assessment, concept of operation for facility evaluation and inspection, and the knowledge aided assessment and the structured applications. 20 years ago, we recognized the major opportunity to improve pharmaceutical quality. We promote the transformation from test quality in to building quality in. We issued the process and the technology guidance in 2004 and published numerous papers on this topic. In 2013, the FDA created an emerging technology program to support industry's development 
and the implementation of innovative approaches in pharmaceutical design and manufacturing. Throughout that program, industry representatives can meet with emerging technology team members from the FDA to discuss, identify, and resolve potential technical and regulatory issues regarding the development and the implementation of a novel technology prior to filing a regulatory submission. As of today, the FDA has approved nine continuous manufacturing applications. We have contributed to the development of ICH continuous manufacturing guidance and the modernization of pharmaceutical manufacturing from batch to continuous production. If your company has not yet deployed continuous manufacturing, I would strongly encourage you to do so as this represents our future. In 2004, we started the Pharmaceutical Quality by Design Initiative. QBD is a systemic approach to the development that begins with the predefined objectives and emphasize product and process understanding and control based on sound science and quality risk management. QBD emphasizes product and process understanding and control. Thus, 2007 QBD paper defined four elements of QBD, namely, define target product quality profile, design product and process, identify critical quality attributes and process parameters, and control product and process. The 2014 QBD paper further clarifies the concept of quality by design and describes its objectives. The, this paper the details how to achieve product and process understanding by identifying critical process parameters and critical material attributes. And it defines three levels of control strategy. Level one, Level 1 utilizes automatic engineering control to monitor the security of the output material in real time. Level 1 control is the most adaptive. Level 2 consists of pharmaceutical control with reduced end product testing and flexible material attributes and process parameters within the established design space. Level 3 is a, is a level of control traditionally used, used in the pharmaceutical industry. This control strategy relies on extensive and product testing and the tightening constraint material attributes and process parameter. So it is least adaptive and least desired. The emerging technology and quality by design initiative are largely external phased, meaning pharmaceutical industry. Internally, the FDA has adopted integrated quality assessment, improve, implemented concepts of operation for facility evaluation and inspection, and made significant progress in new, new initiative called Knowledge Aided Assessment and Structure Application. The IQ concept is a fundamental, fun, foundational cornerstone when FDA and the CEDA stood up its office pharmaceutical quality in 2015. Experts from drug substance, drug product, manufacturing, including inspection and biopharmaceutics, working together to make risk and science-based decisions on the approvability of the application. There is ongoing effort to improve IQA process and practice. The ongoing IQ improvements effort helped the FDA to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of quality assessment. A post by Joanne, Dave, and Steve in this workshop provides details of, of the ongoing IQA optimization. The benefits of IQ include the close collaboration and communication among disciplines in a team environment is better decision making, assures that the application of uniform quality standards and promote consistent regulatory practice. The integration of quality review and inspection meaning the issues uncovered during the application review are shared with investigators, and conversely, reviews are updated as to the any inspectional finding. This closer alliance, alliance of reviewed investigators maximizes expertise and results in more informed decisions on facility acceptability and application approvability.
The API assessment is one of the important IQA disciplines. Today's lifecycle API is committed to our strategic priorities, innovation, transparency, collaboration, communication, and engagement. Lifecycle API staff developed the innovative workload management tool to address high workload issues, provided industry transparency on the API review process, review policy, and technical standards to offer better clarity of expectations. API staff collaborated with field investigators and other dis discipline experts to perform comprehensive risk-based quality assessment. Leverage transparency and understanding so that the FDA and the industry can improve communication, resulting in a more efficient review process. Finally, API staff is increased increasing industry understanding of the process and technical standards through presentations and workshop, workshops like this one. To further integrate quality assessment, we develop and implement a concept of operation for facility evaluation and inspection in 2017. And it defined four types of inspections, namely pre-approved inspection, post-approved inspection, surveillance inspection, and a forecast inspection. Private approval inspections support the review of marketing application for drug products to ensure high quality manufacturing. Post approval inspection is initiated after drug product approval to verify that commercial scale manufacturing can produce the product as it's approved. Surveillance inspection monitors the state of the pharmaceutical manufacturing quality to satisfy our legal requirement to inspect product or production operations. Full cause inspection is initiated in response to a specific event or observation that bring into the question the quality of a pharmaceutical facility, process, or drug product. The concept of operation streamlines the facility evaluation and inspection program that ensures consistent and efficient transparency in facility evaluation, inspection, and regulatory decision making for marketing applications. Strategic alignment across the theater and OI functional unit by clarifying roles and responsibilities. They improve FDA's operational capacity by enhanced collaboration between various CEDAR and OI offices, increased access to facility and regulatory decision information across the FDA. It finally, improved timelines of regulatory, advisory, and informed actions to protect public health and promote drug quality, safety, and effectiveness. Lastly, certainly not least, I want to discuss a new initiative called Knowledge-Aided Assessment and Structure Application, or CASA. CASA is a database platform for drug quality assessment and application that support knowledge management. The CASA system is being designed to capture and manage knowledge during the life cycle of a drug product, include established roles and algorithm to facilitate risk identification, mitigation, and communication for the drug product manufacturing process and facility. Perform computer added analysis of application for, a comp for a comparison of regulatory standards and quality risk across the repository of the approved drug products and facilities. Finally, CASA provides an structured assessment that radically eliminates text-based narratives and summarization of the information from the application. Just last month, the FDA successfully launched the CASA for generic drugs. We are planning to develop and launch CASA for new drugs and biologics in the future. CASA consists of KA and ASA. KA represents knowledge-aided assessment. It is an integrated set of tools and framework to facilitate regulatory assessment and knowledge management. KA is the FDA internal phase. SA stands for the structure application. It is external phase, meaning for pharmaceutical industry. It is a contact and organization of a submission and electronic data standards. ISH accepted FDA's proposal to revise 
the sub submission format or organization we call ISHM4Q. I'm very excited about the future where data and information can be freely submitted and received. Regulators can focus their effort on evaluation with a minimum documentation. In conclusion, patients deserve quality medications. The FDA is making every effort to assure the quality medication are available to the American public. Finally, I want to thank our host, Cedar Small Business and Industry Assistant, ONDP Lifecycle API leadership and staff, OPQ and other Cedar offices. API assessment is a true team effort. Thank you for your attention.